We made it. Mathieu Seguin, cinematographer, thank you for being here on this show, uh, which is really exciting for me to launch with somebody like you because I did some research on your background and it just actually really inspired me. So thanks for coming all the way here to Sweet 16 Studio. It feels good. You Welcome. got a great space here. I hope a lot of other people get to see it. I'd like, us to, uh, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about your background. I know you went to LA, you've studied in some fancy schools and you're really into cinematography, but you're doing, you're doing a lot of things. So I'd like you to give me a, just a quick little summary of sort of your journey in the entertainment industry. I'm a filmmaker. You know, it's, it's more of a philosophy of life than anything else being a filmmaker. It's not a, a particular job because it consumes everything you do. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm addicted to creating things and I think filmmaking is one of those things where you, it requires collaboration on and every part to create one vision. And that's an exciting thing. And, and I did it when I was a kid. I was uh, I'm the youngest brother of, of three older brothers. My older brother used to make movies. He used to be the director and I used to be in front of the camera. And then when he left, you know, it's, I really enjoyed the process. And, and I discovered, you know, filmmaking on that side because I had to kind of take it up. And, and I did some films in high school with my friends and, you know, always kind of going over and beyond, you know, where it should be just a little scene, I would spend a lot of time editing, or I, I made one film in high school, there was a meteorite that comes down, and I remember once, I, we had to do where the meteorite landed, and there was a fire, and so I put some like, gas all over, but then the gas tank was right near it, and oh my god, it almost blew up, but luckily I took it out, uh, but you know, that's how you learn as that's a you filmmaker, learn. You that's the process. You a couple things up, you know? <laughs> why not? Good but it, it's just these things where, you know, it's just cr creating and stuff like that. And, and fortunately, you know, to some degree, it was right time, right place where in Northern Ontario, all of a sudden there's these big grants being like, hey, come film in Northern Ontario, where before there was not even a possibility of being, let alone a cinematographer, but being a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. You know, when I grew up, I didn't think it was possible. I just enjoyed it. It wasn't because, oh, wow, I'm going to be this. It, it's like, yeah, that's not a career that you do here. It's like, it's fine. You could do your fun, little fun hobby films, but it's not a career, right? And then all of a sudden there's a, there's a film industry here and, and I was working somewhere else and, and you know, I would, I would finish my job and I would go on set and I was doing the behind the scenes and stuff like that. And sometimes they had night shoot and I would do the night shoot and then I would come back to work the next day. You know, it's just, I, I just enjoyed observing on set. It was so amazing seeing this equipment and seeing how the cinematographer moves things around. And it was just, you know, I, I absolutely loved it. And, and I knew that that was where I wanted to be. So is that how you ended up in LA training there? Uh, no, that was when I just started in, in Sebre. And now f from there I did, you know, a few years working in Sudbury, um, you know, being an in, indie, uh, indie cinematographer or indie filmmaker in the sense that I would work on these, these sets and learn from it. And then I would apply those techniques, music videos, corporate films, um, uh, you know, uh, commercials or, or uh, short films, a, a lot of student films, just anything that I could film really, but apply the techniques that I saw a set. I'm like, oh, that's what he does with the diffusion or, or he put that back. But, but the thing is that I didn't have the tools, right? So, in, you know, I would mimic it, but with like garbage bags or with wax paper or, you know, and, and a lot of duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was those techniques that afterwards I found out that, you know, those are very valuable techniques to learn how to light on the cheap because you learn to light very fast. Um, and, and, you know, it's all about the direction of the light afterwards. You know, it's like you could have all the light in the world, but if you don't know the direction of it, it's, it's, it's going to flatten out. Um, so inherently by using little lights and, and just a low amount of equipment kind of gave me that style where it was stylish, you know, mm. and it was very interesting. And with learning that, that's how I got to build a portfolio to go or to even have the confidence to apply to the American Film Institute, which is that fancy school you, you yeah. were naming, um, which is, you know, I'm going to say this, but, but it's the Harvard of film school. If you know, for people that don't, don't know what that is, um, the American Film Institute, they, they have thousands of applicants from all over the world that apply to the school. They, they accept only 28 within their cinematography program. They have other disciplines, they have six other disciplines, but, mm -hmm. or in total six. Um, but I was one of the 28s that got accepted that year when I applied, so. That's um, amazing, you must have been so proud. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like, how was that possible? <laughs> That's crazy, you know, it's, uh, it was, it was uh, amazing, but also really just, 
I had to get my ass over there as well, <laughs> which was another uh, challenge on its own because, uh, you know, it's, the tuition is quite expensive and it's not something that, that I had in the bank uh, to start off with. So you worked hard, you made your way up from the ground and now you're doing, you've come back home. Yes. To Sudbury. Yes. And you've launched a new studio, Motion Arc Studios. Yes. So Motion Arc Studio is something that I, I did as a sole proprietorship um, back then. When, you know, I could do some corporate films and all that stuff. But now, yeah, I'm, I'm back and in, in, in kind of rebooting Motion Arc Studios, um, you know, because I want to offer now the skill set that I've learned, you know, from going to Los Angeles and, and working with these incredible uh, Hollywood, the Hollywood masters, really. Like, I know it sounds cheesy, but that's really what they are, you know. I, I got a class from uh, James Planet, who was the gaffer on E.T., you know, like, he's the one that taught me how to light. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. So, so it's like, that's, those are pretty Does it get any people. bigger than E.T.? It, it, you know, <laughs> it's just having that pool of knowledge and being yeah. able to ask him a question and be like, hey, how did you light that scene? You know, in Fisher King, the central uh, station, you know, how did you do that? And it's like, oh, well, this is how I did. And it's just like, wow, that's just knowledge that you can't find on the internet. You know, right. it's like, it's, it's amazing having access to that because it also um, makes it now like, achievable right it's like mm -hmm. these things that sometimes you see it's like oh wow there's just so amazing I can never be like that and then when you start to hear them talk you start to realize that y you yourself think like that you know you might not be at their level yet but I certainly found a lot of similarities between the amazing guest speakers that we had every week and telling their story I found uh, myself within their story you know I could find I could relate to them and, and being like Oh, I see. It's, and really comes down to, it's just hard work. <laughs> That's right. And we've talked about this off camera and I really love, the reason I was so excited to have you on the show and I wanted to, to try to get launched with you is because you spoke so much about the importance of passion, not just passion in front of the lens, but passion behind the lens and what it takes for somebody to take it the extra mile so that it does look artistic or it does have a style, it does have character. And you talk about passion a lot. I'd like to hear your ideas on, I mean, it's clear that you've got a lot of passion for what you're doing. Um, but talk to me about what you're looking for with the people you're working with right now, what you're trying to attract out there, you know, um, to bring to your team or to bring on to projects. Yeah, I, I think passion is the central thing that will make any work better, right? Anybody that does any job, if they are focused and passionate about it, uh, they will do incredible things, you know, and it's not a monetary value that you could apply to it. It's not like if I give you $500 more, will you be more passionate? You know, it's, it's innate. It's in that person and everybody has their special skill set, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my skill set happens to be I'm passionate about cinematography. I'm sure there's other people like me that have a passion for content creating. You know, it doesn't have to be cinematography precisely, but I'm looking for content creators to, to join our team and, and you know, we, we could do a, a lot together because I have a, uh, there's a lot of people that, that come to me for, for work and I want to share the, that work as well, um, but I need to find content creators. It really is a team sport. Yeah. It, yeah. It's incredible. The more I get into the, you know, the idea of making digital media, but specifically video, and then you're into film, which is a whole other level of video production. Man, there's a lot of people involved. We were talking too about the difference between the audio guys mm -hmm. and, the, and the cinematography guys, right? The guys who care about what it looks like and mm -hmm. then the guys who care what it sounds like. But somehow in the world we live in, because of YouTube, mm -hmm. you have to even learn how to do both these days if you want to serve that, yeah. that market. So what, what market are you looking to serve right now? What are you focused on right now with your business? Well, um, in January, I said, you know, I've, I've looked at the marketplace and, and really w with the pandemic and stuff like that, what, what I could offer to these businesses that, that are, you know, interested in, in my services and some premium content. And really right now, I'm focused on the mining and industrial sector, especially mm -hmm. in, in Sudbury where I'm at. Um, there's a lot of them and, um, you know, they're, they have global markets. Like there's uh, multi-million dollar companies all over Sudbury and, and it's not in all like that in anywhere else in the country you know we have a very unique opportunity where we have a bustling film industry meaning that we have talented people we have the equipment that you could get in toronto or los angeles all in sudbury uh, which is not the case for many other cities in in, uh, in canada uh, and second to that is that there's these companies that that have budgets that could uh that could pay for these 
videos where th these videos will allow them to to reach global markets you know and and it's about having this holistic approach where uh, by engaging content creators here you know they're just going to develop uh, the the talent up here and that's going to benefit them as well you know and that's kind of what what I want to showcase it's like it's it's content creation is now the the kind of new medium where everybody wants to to do it. Well, let's make Northern Ontario the content creation capital. You know, we Definitely. we can do that. It's no longer bounded by geography. It's bounded by talent. So you know, let's show what we got because yeah. there's companies that want to pay for content creators. We just need to find them and unite them. Totally. And I, I, the word I use for that is culture. You know, it's our culture that makes us interesting. It's, mm -hmm. it's the way we choose to operate with each other. And if we can collaborate, it's easy to say collaboration. It's challenging to do. Mm -hmm. How are you finding, how are you getting that done? How are you finding it on the ground right now? I mean, I know it's full of challenges and, um, you know, there, for obvious reasons, there's competition, there's, mm -hmm. You know, there's there's just a lot of reasons why it's challenging to collaborate. How are you finding it on the ground right now as you're trying to figure this out? Well, challenging, yes, for sure. Especially <laughs> when you know it's like illegal to go see somebody else. You know, at at any time, uh, it's very challenging. But because of COVID, but, uh, yeah, because yeah. of COVID, um, yeah, that's what exactly <laughs> not always illegal. Um, but really, when I do have a project or something like that, it, it comes down to having you know uh, being organized and having visuals. It's like I I usually don't approach people. For, for free or, or, or passion jobs if I don't know myself what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. I, I no longer ask people if I, if I, want, if I need their service, I've, if I didn't do the homework myself, right? Mm -hmm. And, and that's, what, that's what inspires people. It's like, hey, do you want to work on my project? Like, yeah, yeah. But I go, hey, this is what I want to do. And I have a film and, and I have images and I want to make it look like that. And we're going to have this. And, and this is my idea. What do you think? You know, like you have to get them, you have to inspire them to be, want to work on your project, right? And that's really my approach to, for, to collaboration is that, hey, I'm willing to do the work. And, and it's probably gonna be a lot of work working on this project, but it's gonna be rewarding and satisfying. You talk about storytelling in your branding too. Why do you think the storytelling's the hook? What is it for you that you feel storytelling is so important? Even when you're talking about mining and you're talking about industrial sector, right there on the front yeah. of your website, right there in everything you do, you're talking about story. Yeah, it's, it's the crux to everything, right? And the reason why it's important, it's very simple. It's because we're humans. You know, we want to connect with humans. Um, you know, it's not interesting, even as you could have the most amazing drone shot and the most amazing gimbal shot or anything like that, but if it doesn't connect on a human level and it doesn't add value to it, right? It, it's not, it's cool, but it's not interesting, right? Mm. It, and how fast do you say, oh, you could have the coolest shot, but then you swipe away from it. It's not interesting because you can't connect. As soon as you connect with somebody on, on that one-to-one, -one, you become now to trust that person, you, you get to feel for who that person is, and most importantly, you get to relate, right? And, and that's the power of, of video. It's, it's extremely powerful. Like, I don't think every, any YouTube person knows exactly how powerful video is because even though it's a two-dimensional screen that we're watching, because we could see the eyes, we could connect to it, and we're... It's strange how our, our brain and all that stuff could kind of, you know, eliminate that it's just a screen and now we see as a person, right? Because it's a person. It doesn't matter if it's just a ones and zeros displaying this. It's a person that we could connect to. It makes to. me cry all the time. Yeah. And well, I'm okay with that. Right? <laughs> and, but that's a, good, that's a good example, right? That Just exactly. the fact that we could get we emotional feel. on a piece of video. And I call that art. Yeah. I call that making art. Absolutely. So the point of this show, Richard Forte Presents, is, is to bring attention to the people who are in the industry, in the entertainment industry working. We want to give tricks and tips and behind the scenes and how it's really working. But we also ultimately want to bring attention to artists, to people mm -hmm. who are making art happen. Mm -hmm. And I have been so impressed with your portfolio as I did research on what you were doing. I mean, you really have to check out, you have a couple websites. You have yeah. one that's Mathieu uh, Seguin Seguin com. Com, yeah. and you have Motion Arc Studios. Yeah. That's more the industrial the and the commercial stuff. stuff. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage people out there to go check Mathieu's stuff out. It's really, really impressive. The quality is amazing. I have to say that I can tell that you have the passion because you care about quality. And you're also an artist yourself by the stories that you've chosen to tell. I've been really inspired to see what's even possible for our team here. So in the future, I really hope to collaborate a lot mm -hmm. with you and 
see where it goes but congratulations on your success so far and i really do wish you the best like moving forward i'm sure there's nowhere but up uh for your career it's it's all about working together you, you mentioned a bit of, of artists and and really that's you know being a filmmaker you have to be an artist right um and and being an artist is it's just an expression of the soul you know it's it's just because we you know we communicate with words is that the best way to communicate i don't yeah. think so because <laughs> To me, words are very bounding, right? They label things. And mm -hmm. it, as soon as you say a word, that means you're this. And now this word, there's no, you know, there's no uh, uh, flexibility. flexibility. It, it, life is a spectrum. It's not these, this or that, you know, and that's what film allows to do. And like, you can have the most powerful film about the most awful person. But if you learn the context of his story, you know, his childhood, how he grew up and this and that, and you're like, wow, he did that most awful, heinous thing. But could relate to this person he's yeah. human you know at the end of the day the most heinous person is human because we all have good and evil within ourselves yeah. and that's the beauty of of film it allows us to show that in a non-preaching way in a way that we could digest it and 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 interpret it ourselves it's sensual first and intellectual second so what's the ultimate impact you want to make with your career with your choices the, my, the, the impact that I want to do is, is I want to make my own content. You know, that's really the, the, the goal of this. Why I came back to Northern Ontario, all of this stuff, it, it seems kind of maybe out of, out of place to, to, to come back. Uh, but to me, it, 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 it's the opportunity to have a creative lifestyle and not be able to or not have to take these jobs where you need to, you know, keep hustling to pay the apartment or, or do that and do that. And it's like, I just want to create these very interesting indie films. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm, if I'm expressing something from the soul, I'm happy. And that's creating is my happy place kind of thing. I don't know how you could possibly end on a better note. Creating is my happy place kind of thing. <laughs> Mathieu Seguin, you're an amazing guy. I would like now for us to show the audience a little bit about how you set up, because you do want to do the independent filmmaking stuff, but you also have a commercial hat that you put on and you are able to help people who want to get their story out, who want to tell their company story, mm -hmm. their fundraiser story, their whatever it is that they need to get out there, whatever campaign they want to get yeah. out there, you can help it get, get, you can help them get it done. Yeah, that's it. So I'm, I'm going to show you, we're going to set up this awesome, you know, little setup that I have within my kit or in, in, I could fit all within my car, but it's quite powerful. And I just, want to highlight that the importance of of lighting and and not to say that you know we need a big crew but it's just attention to detail makes a significant difference in the image right and and not the image of the um, uh, technically of course of course it does you know but I'm, I'm talking emotionally lighting mm -hmm. is emotion we're not lighting for exposure anymore you mm -hmm. know we could go to 12,000 ISO we don't need exposure anymore we need emotion and that's mm -hmm. what light does you know blue and, 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 and tungsten or daylight and tungsten have different emotions and all of that stuff. So, you know, we're, we're not going to do a whole bunch, but we're just going to do a nice little setup and, and see what the difference is when you have a little bit of attention to detail. Well, I love your passion. I love your energy. I love what you're doing. I want people out there to find out about you, hire you, get to work with you, yeah. see your art. So thanks for coming by and let's go check out how we can set up the proper lighting to do, do some storytelling. Do thanks it. again. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Is there anything we missed? Where can we reach you? Hey, uh, maybe we should tell people where to reach you. Yeah, you could reach me at most. Well, check out my Instagram, Matsuse again, DP, uh, which is actually interesting because all of those uh, photos are all my film collection. Uh, okay. So I take some uh, medium format, six by six and some 35 millimeter and you know, that's all my, it's only my film collection on there that I have on there. So uh, I think people are going to like that cool. and you could uh, DM me from there or, or reach out to me. But yeah, check out my Instagram. Awesome. Thanks for coming in, brother. Yeah, it was awesome. I think that was an attempt to say brother. <laughs> I got it. Just bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <clears throat> we have one light. As you can see, nice side light coming in. Uh, very beautiful. But uh, it's a bit contrasty on the face and, and you want to wrap the key. That's essentially what you want to do. So what we're going to do is just add another little soft, a, a, a smaller soft box uh, just to kind of wrap the key and give some life to the eyes. Um, and then we're going to work on the background. And so that's the medium sized soft box. I'm going to take off, take out the smaller one. A bit easier to set up, thank God. Control the still of the light, as you can see. 
before this light was spilling all over the white wall, ruining the contrast. You already have a bright face, you don't want to compete that same level of intensity in the background. Technically, you know, lighting wise, is you, you want to balance out things, right? You don't want uh, these, this drastic contrast, such as windows or, or anything like that, to, to really uh, clip the camera and then saturate the sensor. Um, you want to balance out the things, and this is where you know a nice soft box for the face uh, could really balance out uh, anything, but also make make the, the the person pop out of the image and, and add to that three dimensionality of it. So whoever is watching this, if if you saw a bit of the equipment or, or like what I'm saying, um, you know I could bring that to your location. Uh, it probably if you want to do a short interview, I could say your message within four hours. I could be in and out. Uh, I do need to scout your place first before, uh, and I do need to do a bit of homework. But if I am to do uh, come to your location, this is this is easy for me. Um, this is I do this in my sleep kind of thing, um, and you know I want to make sure that the image that I capture, if if you do hire me, is is I'm going to make you look good, and it's about the message as well, and and we're going to have to craft that. But uh, I'm at your service, and I have all of this knowledge accrued in this equipment, and and I want to make your images better.